supports us and all that is in there. We worship you again, O Lord, this day. We magnify thy holy name. Be thou blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. As we are about to hear your word, O Lord, be with us. We cover this message with the blood of Jesus Christ. We cover your church with the blood of Jesus Christ. We cover your children worldwide with the blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. If you are happy, may we hear another bigger amen. amen. The topic of our message today is, is strong and courageous. Amen. amen. If you don't mind, say to your brother or your sister by your side, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. You need to be strong and courageous in the most high God who has left you. No matter where you are, no matter what you are passing through, no matter what the case might be, be strong and courageous in the most high God. And Thomas says that living God, in the book of Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2, he says, when you pass through the waters, be courageous, the waters will never drown you. And when you pass through the fire, and the Lord encourage you to be strong and courageous, that this fire will never hurt you. Praise the living God. Amen. If you don't mind and you are having your scripture, please open up with me to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, and reading from verse 6. Deuteronomy, chapter 31, and verse 6 says, be strong and be and of good God on, and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, He it is that doeth that does go with thee. We not spare thee, nor forsake thee. Amen? Amen. And when the Lord was talking to Moses, he said, Be of good courage, be strong. That the God that is with you will never fail you. No matter where you are going, no matter what may happen, no matter what you have passed through in the past, I can't acknowledge that what, what most of us have passed through in the past keep making them to be discouraged all over, all the time. But my message to you this morning is this. The God who has made heaven and earth, who has made me in his image, he can do all things. He keeps encouraging the people of God. He said, be strong in anything you are doing. Wherever you are, and the word of the Lord says, be strong in that place. And be of good courage. For the most high God will surely take you to your destination. And the most high God will surely bring all your good plans to manifestation. Amen. Praise the living God. Amen. Why we need to be courageous in the most high God is this. Please talk with me to the book of Psalm chapter 46. For you to understand why I and you need to be courageous. Because God knows that there will be lots of storms, temptations and difficulties as we are living. Talk with me to the book of Psalm chapter 46. I'm reading from verse 1 and 2. And 1 said, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Amen? Amen. And the Most High God keeps telling his people that he is our refuge. He is with us. Even in that very trouble, that he will surely intervene. For the sake of I and you, that we will never be put to shame. Praise the living God. Amen. And verse 2 proceeds to say, Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Amen? Amen. And the scripture said, Though this earth might be moved, the situation might be very difficult. It might seem as if to say there will be no solution. But the most high God says, when the situation appears to be as if to say there is no, no solution, he said he will be there for you. And he proceeds to say, even if the mountains shall be shifted from their positions to the ocean, he said the Most High God will be there for the children of God. And therefore, he's encouraging you to be strong in whatsoever you are passing through, and wherever you are, and whatsoever you are doing. He says be strong in those things, and be courageous, for the Most High God will never forsake his people. Praise the living God. Amen. We as the children of God, we have been purchased. When you understand, I understand the most precious thing ever that I have ever learned of is the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. If God decided to share this blood to purchase us, automatically God is willing to do whatsoever that concerns his people. Praise the living God. Amen. The, the situation of panicking and trouble and temptations, that God is with us here. The word of God is this. 
that we will never be drowned in our temptations of those oceans. Praise and thank God. Amen. Please turn, up, turn again with me if you don't mind, if you have that scripture, to the book of First Chronicle, First Chronicle chapter 28. I'm reading from verse 20. If you are there, say amen. Amen. First Chronicle chapter 28 and verse 20 says, And then he said to Solomon his son, Be strong and of good courage, and do it. Praise the living God. And he's encouraging Solomon to be strong and courageous in the Most High God. And do that thing that you have planned to start doing. Don't allow Satan to discourage you. As I told you, one of the greatest people that Satan is using against the children of God is fear. When Satan incites fears into you, you will start panicking. Automatically, you will lose your vision, you will lose your compass, you will lose your senses of belonging. Because Satan has attacked you with that spirit of fear. But the scripture says, Solomon, whatsoever you plan to do that is right before God. He says, do it and fear not. Praise the King God. Amen. And he proceeds to say, Nor be dismayed. For the Lord thy God, even my God, will be with thee. He will not spare thee, nor forsake thee, until thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And he proceeds to advise him, Don't be dismayed. Do not allow anybody to discourage you or to demoralize you in whatsoever you have started doing. He said, continue to the very end. The most high God who has made you is with you. Praise the living God. And so on, he to the advice of David. And he was courageous. Till he finished the service of the most high God. Praise the living God. Whenever you are, you, are, you are about to start a journey of success, probably there must be lots of temptations along the way. Temptations from the environment. Temptations and trials from the people you know. Temptations and trials from your family members. But the word of the Lord says unto you, Be strong and courageous. Don't quit from what you have started. From what you have asked God to give you. Don't stop. Don't quit. Till you achieve that which God has planned for you. Praise and thank God. Amen. We as the children of God these days, we, we usually give up hope easily. But what the scripture says, it is impossible for you to receive anything good from the Most High God without faith. You must come to God with faith and believe that God, who will perfect your heart desire over what you are struggling with. Praise the living God. Amen. Please turn again with me to the book of Philippians. Let us see the encouragement of the apostles of God. Philippians chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 13. The book of Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Amen? Amen? I want you to encourage yourself that you can do all things, no matter whatsoever it is, that project that you decided to start from, that journey that has been giving you sleepless nights, your expectation from God. I know some of us are demoralized, some of us are highly discouraged because they are not meeting up with their expectation in life. The St. Paul says, this is the God who can perform all things. Therefore, I will trust in that God. And through him, I can do all things. There is no exemption of what he can do. He, he said that he cannot do. But he says all things, no matter what it is in this land, believe by faith, through Jesus Christ, who strengthens you, you can do all things. Praise the living God. Amen. We are special people from God. The true worshippers of God are special people from God. When we remember about the covenant of God and mankind, He said He decided to elect His children and make them a peculiar people from the face of the earth. And since God has decided to select you and make you a special child of Him, God, automatically that God will continue giving with you. Praise the living God. Amen. Turn again, please, with me to the book of our Bible test for the day, if you don't mind. The book of Isaiah, chapter 41, I'm reading from verse 6. If you are there, say Amen. Amen. And he says, They help everyone his neighbor, and everyone said to his brother, 
be of good courage. This is the message of Christ to the churches. Why Christ decided to come to the church, to come down on earth, and make himself the head of the church, is for the church to encourage one another. For brothers to encourage one another. When your brother is in a difficult situation, don't laugh over that situation. When your brother is in the, the, under, under trial and temptations, don't laugh over it. And God was speaking to Isaiah, he says, speak to my people, speak to one another, be strong and courageous. Encourage your brother in the difficult path that he's, taking, that he's passing through. That is situation that your brother or your sister is facing. Don't make more grief of that situation. Don't laugh him over that situation. No matter how bad it has went down for him or her. And the scripture says, encourage one another. With good words. This is what made us the children of God. And when Christ came, Christ decided to come and encourage I and you. This part we are lost. This part we are suffering. And the scripture said, Christ continued walking about, seeking for I and you to encourage us. And he's advising you to encourage your brother or your sister in the Lord. And which we hardly see that happening today in our midst. And verse 7 says, the carpenter encouraged this, and this encouraged this. And the whole of them we are able to function properly in the glorification of God's name. How are you encouraging your brother in that situation? It is a simple question we need to ask each other. The situation of tears, sorrows, <laughs> lamentations. Some of us are in situation of agony. Some of us are in situation of hopelessness. And Christ has made everyone to come together. For you to encourage, for her to encourage thee. <laughs> and see to encourage thee. How are we encouraging each other? Praise that you call. It is important when we realize what is Christian kingdomship on earth. It is all about goodness. It is not about evil. It is not about mockery. It is not about laughing each other over our situation. Making it a headline. Praise that you call. I proceed to verse 10. And verse 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Amen? Amen. But you that is in that situation of sorrows, you that is facing that situation of agony, and thus says the living God, fear thou not. No matter how bad that situation is, our God is able. In the book of Daniel, chapter 3 and verse 17, the book of Nazareth decided to humiliate the children of God. Meshach, Shonak, and Abednego, they made just a simple sentence. They said, God, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, we will never bow to you. But our God is able. So that God that has made you is now talking to you in verse 10 and he says, Fear not, neither be dismayed. Don't allow what you are seeing to start causing panicking and tension in your life. Don't allow what you expected. You are feeling that the journey will continue being bad and rough. Don't allow that to demoralize you or to take you away from the presence of God. And the most high God proceeds to say, For I am thy God. God is not a man that will tell lies. Men might deceive you. Our wives may deceive us. But the living God, who will never deceive us, says, For I am with you in that situation, to strengthen you and to encourage you. And the word of God keep on encouraging you to be strong in that situation. Stop shedding tears. Shedding tears will not, will not solve that problem. But what will solve that problem is going to your nails, talking to the God who has made you. You did not make, make yourself in, 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 in God's image. You did not even request that from God, I want you to make it. But God decided to do that. And that same God is telling you that I am with you in that situation. Praise and thank God. Yeah. And he proceeds to say, I will help thee. Yeah, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. 
Any word that comes out of the mouth of the Most High God is liable. And when Christ was talking to us, he encouraged us in the book of Matthew chapter 5. And he says, the heaven and earth may pass away. But none of the work of the Most High God that will ever pass away. In my life and in your life. It is time for you to step up in faith. To believe, what, to claim what God has have written for you. God has written deliverance and success and upliftment in your life. Don't give a rise yourself. Don't allow the promises of God to go back from you. They might have gathered against you. But remember what the scripture says. In the book of Isaiah chapter 54, verse 15 says, Surely they shall gather. But because their gathering is not of the most high God, they shall surely be scattered. Amen. So probably when you see gathering against you, against your future, against your destiny, you don't need to panic. Because God has spoken to you earlier. He has revealed that revelation to you that they must surely gather. It might be your brothers and sisters in the Christ. It might be your church members. It might be your family members. It might be the community where you are. They said, the scriptures say they must surely gather. But be confident in that God when they are gathering against you. Praise the living God. And when we proceed to verse 17 of Isaiah 54, and he says, No weapon of these powers come against you that shall ever prosper. Amen. Praise the living God. Amen. We proceed. And verse 13 says, For I, for I the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. When any word comes from the Most High God the first time, and the same word come again the second time, that word is fair. It can never be changed. In verse 10, he says, Fear not, I will help you. What is your fear? I don't know. What you are passing through? I don't know. But what God is telling I and do is this. In verse 10, he says, Fear not, I will come in into that situation. And verse 13, he says again, I will come in into that situation. Fear not, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness to wipe away your tears. Praise the living God. Amen. There is nothing that is greater than God Almighty. For my little experience with God, whenever I'm in difficulties, I don't need calling people. I don't need crying to people. I know people may help. But I, I always cry to that God who has made me. I always cry to God who has allowed that situation to come. I'm not the one who requested for that in situation. The temptations and trials, you are not the one who requested that you want temptations to come on your way. But that God that knows it all is the liable and the right person to tell your problems. Praise the living God. Amen. And I proceed to verse 17. And verse 17 says, When the poor and the needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, I the Lord will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake the praise that is God. Amen. And God was speaking. He continued speaking to I and you. Time will come in our life. There will be difficulties. There will be problems. There will be temptations. And he says, the poor and the needy, the class that are being despised and rejected today in our generation, are the poor and the needy. You see the rich ones. No one despises them, no one rejects them. But the poor and needy, they are highly humiliated. They are being rejected in the society. And God says, when that need comes to a limit that you are thirsty, your tongue has dried up. You keep seeking for help. You keep crying due to hopelessness. And the scripture says, then the most high God will come into that situation. And he says, he will never, God will never forsake the poor. God will never forsake the oppressed. No matter the, what the oppressors are doing, the oppressors might be the land that we sojourn into. As we know, we have lots of difficulties. Whenever you sojourn in a, you sojourn in a, 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 a foreign land, you will always encounter difficulties. Sometimes in your homeland as well, you do encounter a series of difficulties. It might be spiritual difficulties, it might be physical difficulties, but the Lord promised and said, I will never forsake my children. And nobody that comes to God sincerely 
wholeheartedly you believe in the power of this most high God that God will never reject. God has never rejected anybody. Praise the King God. Whosoever that entrusted in the most high God, committing your life and what you are passing through into the hands of God, you will never be rejected. The story we end as a testimony for you. Praise the King God. And we proceed. If you don't mind, please still turn with me to the book of Luke to see why it is important the scripture keep on reminding us to continue helping one another. This is all about Christianity. Come with me to the book of Luke chapter 22. I'm reading from verse 32. Luke chapter 22. And verse 32 says, yeah. That I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Praise the King God. Amen. When Christ, before he completed his job on earth, he knew all that will happen. And he knew that time will come, there will be loss of discouragement among brothers, co mindedness, problems. And he helped Peter. He prayed for Peter. He said, I'm praying for you to have the power to overcome when the time comes. But now, when you have been delivered, remember your brothers. Praise the living God. This is the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said to I and you, remember anybody that you are better than. Remember your brother who is suffering. Remember your sister who is suffering sincerely, not, not uh, hypocritically, but sincerely. Help and encourage that person in Christ. And when Christ passed away, Peter and the apostles, Peter was delivered according to the word of God. And he strengthened others. He encouraged, he reunited brotherhood in Christ. It is our obligation as well to do like them so that at the last day we will have accounts before God. The most important thing, I'm not scared about today or tomorrow. Today we have seen today. Probably we know we might see tomorrow. But the most important thing is at the last day. When you will be standing before your maker, the most high God, what will be your account? How did you try to encourage the church of Christ? How did you try to encourage your brothers? The brothers that we are down, that we are having problems, you made more great of them. And because we made more great of some of them, they decided to leave. They stopped worshiping God. And because we oppressed some of them, they decided to leave. They start worshiping God. Is that your account at the last day? When Christ will call you up at the last day, will you tell him you discourage the children of God? You oppress your neighbor or your brother or sister in Christ, and that person decided to leave because of your attitude. Is that the good account that we give to Christ? Who has cautioned you before his ascension? He says, Be helping one another. Praise the Amen. To continue with our scripture, please turn with me to the book of Timothy. Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 17 to 18. If you are there, say Amen. amen. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Amen. amen. What is so important there is the encouragement that Timothy is giving to I and you. What God had assigned him to do, he said, he was encouraged by this most high God. He was confident of his God. And he continued. And he said, the Lord delivered him. That God will deliver you from that situation. Amen. He said, the Lord delivered me from the hands of the lion. All of the most devourable animal is lion. And he says, God has delivered me. 
So you as a child of God who is panicking, that's God who knows before you came to this land. Who knows where you are about to go tomorrow. Be confident that that God will still deliver you from the hands of the lion. Praise that living God. And verse 18 says, And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Praise that living God. Amen. He continues saying in verse 18, This same God will deliver you from the hands of enemies, from all the evil work of devil. Amen. Amen. Children of God don't need to panic. When you go across the scripture, when the children of God and Moses were in the Red Sea, the first thing that the Lord spoke unto Moses is this. He said unto Moses, fear not. In Exodus chapter 14, verse 13 and 14, it says, that's my people, fear not about this situation, about this journey, fear not. For the Egyptians you are seeing, the evil weapons you are seeing, the terrors you are seeing, the downfall, you believe that is downfall, that you are seeing, he said you will never see them anymore. Yeah. And how will this come to manifestation, nobody knows. But when the appointed time comes, the Lord delivers his children, the Israelites, from the power of these demonic Egyptians. And the scripture says, the Lord was in between them, putting that confusion, putting that terror that these people will never touch his people. No matter how sensible you are or how calculative you are, your calculativeness or your smartness can never be compared to the smartness of the Most High God. God has planned everything half its week. And when the time comes, he sent the Egyptians and his people went out of the sea. Praise that thing, God. Yeah. And that is, the, that is the promise that we need to claim today as we are living. You need to claim what God has written for you. No matter the difficulties, there is nobody that will pass through this journey on earth without facing difficulties and trials and temptations. There is nobody. Except you are not a child of God. If you know that are not the children of God, there is still sometimes along the line face difficulties. To conclude our message, please talk with me to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3. I mean from verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says, Now unto him that is able to do a sin abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Amen? Amen. Amen. As St. Paul is writing to the children of God, encouraging them, this is the God who is able to do exceedingly above what you have asked for or what you have said of. That is the only God that can perform all this. So you don't need to continue crying, shedding tears, living hopelessly, hopeless, uh, hopelessly as, a, as, you are not, as if to say you are not a child of God. But you need to be confident in that God. So Paul says, this God is the God who is able. There is not any other God that is able to come into your situation. Praise the living God. Amen. And verse 20, 21 says, Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus through all, throughout all ages, one without end. Amen? Amen. He said, This is our God is the God who is capable throughout all the ages in churches of Christ worldwide. So, as a child of God, you need to stand on your rights, have that dominion that God has given to you, claim whatsoever God has promised in your life by faith. Don't do it carnally. Don't just believe it carnally. But by faith, when you believe all this by faith, implement that faith. The book of James says, faith without work is as good as death. Praise the living God. May God help us. May God see us through. In all the situations we are passing through. My last message is for you as a child of God. Be strong. Be courageous. Don't depend on any man. Don't depend on any woman. Don't depend on any power. But depend on the most high God. The God that we cannot see. But we are seeing what he's doing. We are, we are not seeing this God. But the creation of this God, you keep seeing it day by day. That is the God I want you to depend upon and cry unto him. Be strong. Don't panic. Don't
Don't shed tears anymore. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.